In this video, we're going to do another question on vectors. We're told a particle P moves with a constant velocity 3i plus 2j meters per second with respect to a fixed origin O. It passes through a point A whose position vector is 2i plus 11j meters at t is equal to 0. In part A, we need to find the angle in degrees that the velocity vector of P makes with the vector i. In part B, we need to calculate the distance of P from O when t is equal to 2. OK, let's go through the question here. We've got a constant velocity, and this is the velocity vector. This is telling me every second I move right by 3 units and up by 2 units. I is a unit vector in the x direction. J is a unit vector in the y direction. So unit meaning it's got a length of 1. With respect to a fixed origin O, so if we had now a standard x, y coordinate axis, this is going to be the origin, this is going to be the x axis. We're told it passes through the point A, whose position vector is 2i plus 11j metres. A position vector is relative to the origin. So if we wanted to put this up, what we've got is the fine. So 2i is going to be here, then we're going to find 11j. So that's 5, that's 10, that's 11. So we can put A here, and in column form, we can write this as 2, 11. That's a position vector relative to the origin. If we wanted to work out the distance, it would be Pythagoras, the square root of 2 squared, plus 11 squared. OK, now let's look at this particular velocity vector. This is telling me that we're going to start here, and every second we move right 3 and up 2. So if I looked at the path that this particle was following, what we'd do is go up, uh, sorry, right by 3, up by 2. We would go right by 3, up by 2, and we'd be following this particular path right here. So that's what we'd end up with. We'd be following now this vector here, and let's just put that into place. So consider what we'd have. Let's say now that t was equal to 1 second. After 1 second, we're going to be now at this point. So if t was equal to 1, we would be here. And that is going to have now a position vector of 5. I've moved across by 3 and up by 2, 13. This one, when t is equal to 2, t is equal to 2 seconds, what we're going to have is the following. We've moved across 3 and up 2, so that will give me 8, 15. When t is equal to 3 seconds, we're going to be at this point right here. We've got constant velocity, so it's moving along this straight line. So that's going to be 11, 17. In general, we can say the position vector of a particle at any given time t can be written as r is equal to r naught plus vt. This is simply like a straight line graph. This is where we end up, this is where we start, and then we've got velocity times by time. So let's look at our particle here. rp is going to be where it started which is 211 in column form, plus now the time multiplied by the velocity vector 3, 2. So this is telling me I'm going to end up where I start plus now t times by this velocity vector. t is what we call a scalar or parameter. It's just a multiple of this vector, and I've shown that just here. OK, so that's how you find the position of the particle at any given time t. We're now asked to find the angle in degrees that the velocity vector of p makes with i. i is simply a unit vector in the x direction. So if we looked at this now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to draw it here, I could draw it here if I wanted, but if I just consider what we've got now is this scenario. So this is my velocity vector. So let's say that velocity vector can be written like so. So here now is the velocity vector, 3, 2. This now is the vector i. So all I'm looking at now is the vector i, and that is just there. So what we're looking for then is the angle that it makes with this particular unit vector. As stated, I could have drawn it just here equally easily. So what I've got then is the following. Right angle triangle, we've got 3 and 2. I want this angle right here, which I'm going to call theta. If we do some basic right angle trig, what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have now this scenario. So here's a little right angle triangle. I've gone across by 3 and up by 2. So we've got 3 and 2. Right angle is just here. And this is the angle theta. This now is the opposite. 
this is the adjacent, so we can say now theta will be equal to the inverse tan, tan to the minus 1, of the opposite over the adjacent. So if I just put that for a calculator, I can get now the angle that it makes with i. If I wanted the angle that it makes with j, I could simply either subtract this answer from 90 or flip the triangle round and have now the opposite here now of the angle, which we'd have as this one, to be the 3 and the adjacent to be the 2. So in a calculator, make sure you're in degrees mode, inverse tan now of 2 divided by 3. So that's going to give me 33.69, so 33.69 dot 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 degrees. And they have asked for it now. Uh, we've not been asked for it. Generally, they'll ask it either to one decimal place or to the nearest degree. I'll do it to one decimal place, 33.7 degrees, and that's to 1 dp. Okay, so that's the angle that the velocity vector makes with the vector i. It's saying, how is this moving now? At what angle is it moving away from this particular straight line just here? And that is that angle there. And of course, that will continue. These are just similar triangles. Okay, we're now asked to, in part b, calculate the distance of p from o when t is equal to 2. Now, here I can see that I'm at this position vector. What I'm going to do, though, is actually use the, uh, the equation that we've got here. So when t is equal to 2, what we can say then, when t is equal to 2, the position will be equal to 2 plus now 2 lots of 3, which is going to give me 6 plus 2, which is going to give me 8. If I now consider when t is equal to 2, that will give me 4. 11 plus 4 is 15. We can see that now on the diagram. This is a position vector relative to the origin. So all we need to do for this, and I'm going to show it on the, the graph shortly, is use Pythagoras. That is the position vector. The position vector gives us now the displacement from the origin. The actual distance now is a scalar quantity. So we know from our previous work that a displacement vector is a vector, quite clearly, and that has both magnitude and direction. The actual distance is simply now the magnitude of this, and it's this length of now the right angle triangle. So what we've got then is the following. If we consider now that we have this position vector, and that is going to be 8i plus 15j, this is what we have. We have this triangle. So this is going to be the square root, and I'm going to say now that this will be the absolute value of 8 squared plus now 15 squared. So 225 plus 684, and we can square root that to find our answer. If you recognise this one as a Pythagorean triple, we know that the square root, and let's write this here now, is going to be the square root, what's that, 289, and therefore we can say the distance is going to be equal to 17 units. So we're working now in terms of metres, so this is going to be 17 metres. Now if we look at what I've just done, I've simply gone ahead and created now this scenario. I've looked at that length right there by building up a right angle triangle given the position vector. So let's put this one on, let's make this a bit easier to see. That's all I've done. I've looked now and said to myself, at that time we are a distance of 8 from the origin this way, and then 15 this way. So there's 5, there's 10, and there's 15. So all I wanted now is the distance from the origin. We can see that's a right angle triangle, and I've gone ahead and found now, by using Pythagoras, the distance. So if, for example, it said we had now the position vector at time t is equal to 2 of minus 8, 15, the distance would be still the same. If I had minus 15 plus 8, it would still be the same. The distance is a scalar quantity. It knows no direction. So calculate the distance of p from o when t is equal to 2. We would simply plug it into this to give us the position vector and work with it from there. So I've shown it in terms of graphically, you wouldn't be expected to do this time and time again, but hopefully that gives you some idea on how that is working.